Bunker Hill, historic battlegrounds where we gathered to remember the men who fought in the Civil War, uh, the men who especially who came from Charlestown, who were imbued with the spirit of Bunker Hill and went off happily and proudly to the to uh, save the Union. Uh, this afternoon we are gathered here to commemorate their great sacrifice for our great country. Um, Heavenly Father, we come to you this afternoon and ask that you would be with those who have gathered this day to remember, to remember those who, uh, when they heard the call, they marched off to and the Union, and they may have shed their blood and given their last measure. We just thank you, Lord, for this time that we are here, gathered here today, and we ask a blessing upon all those who are here. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. We're not the drum for our national anthem. Thank you. 
Pledge of Allegiance. Present! Oh! I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice. everyone to Boston National Historical Park here at the Monkey Hill Monument. Today we're here to commemorate another contribution that the men of Charlestown contributed to what has made this country great as it is. Thinking about the tradition and the history of Charlestown men, today it made me think back to the traditions of my being raised, particularly in the South. For those that don't know me, I'm originally from Memphis, Tennessee, on a, on a day like today, my mom would have me in church. And what I thought about this morning was an old Southern hymn that, that went like, the song was named, Nine Nine and a Half Won't Do. So the song was called Nine Nine and a Half Won't Do, and the chorus of it goes a little like, Lord, I'm trying to make 100 because 99 and a half won't do. And when I think about the contributions that the men of Charlestown played toward the American Revolution, and we know the outcome of that, but when it came to call the arms today for the Civil War, I can only imagine that those same men were saying 99 and a half won't do when it comes to the constitutional freedoms for us all. And for that, that as the superintendent of this park that is charged with making sure that we can tell this history for the next 150 years. Also personally as an African American, I'm glad those men of Charlestown said 99 and a half won't do. Thank you. so much to preserve this great country, and we owe them a debt of gratitude. This year marks a bunch of historics for not only the Navy, but also the nation. 70 years since the start of World War II, 150 years since the Civil War, and 200 years since the War of 1812, where America reasserted its independence from Great Britain. It's important to know and remember the past to help us prepare for the future and ensure we don't make those mistakes again. Thank you. On behalf of Lieutenant Colonel Thomas Stewart and Sergeant Major Gregory Whitberg, I bring the citizens of Charlestown greetings from the 1st Battalion, 22nd Infantry, one of the four oldest continuous action operating units in the Massachusetts Army National Guard. We trace our lineage back to 1636. And since 1636, citizen soldiers have laid down their trades and trained in peacetime and fought in wartime 
up until the present. In fact, my unit just recently redeployed from a one year long tour in Afghanistan. So I'm very happy to have them home. And just like any other citizen soldier, they put down their weapons and they return back to their trades. So again, thank you very much for having me here. And uh, that's all I have. Greetings, everyone. On behalf of our headmaster, Dr. Margaret Bledsoe, in the Charlestown Air Force Junior ROTC, uh, we're glad to be here, and we are gratified to be invited to this event every year. Our cadets look forward to celebrating our country. A very important part of our country is our Civil War. The other day, somebody asked me, why is it you still celebrate the Civil War? I said, there has never been a more important war in our nation, and without the Civil War, we would be country that we are today, unified as one. So again, thank you for inviting us, our cadets, 155 strong, that have existed since 1976, and then came into Charlestown, uh, first from Yamada Bars in East Boston, then to Charlestown in the 1980s, and we look forward to many, many years association with this community, and thank you for all the present in your heart. Why is it beautiful country? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, George Maple Jr., Department Commander. President of the Abraham Lincoln Post 11 that was founded by the veterans, the Union veterans of the Civil War here in Charlestown in 1866. It's continued to serve veterans of Charlestown since then and it's my great honor to be enabled to continue the great tradition that these men started. We're here today on this hallowed ground that was fought on by members of the Charlestown Militia, and a hundred years later, the same town supplied enough men to win a number of battles all through the Civil War. And when they came home and became part of the Grand Army of the Republic, the legacy that they left was not only a union that was whole, but a group of men who were determined to take care of all the veterans that had returned home from the Civil War. Through the efforts of the Grand Army of the Republic, soldiers' homes were created, the forerunner of the Veterans Administration was created, and <coughs> numerous posts created charities that helped the wounded veterans, the handicapped veterans that came home, and the widows and their children. So as we stand here today, I want us all to just give a moment's thought of the legacy that these gentlemen created for us. And while we honor them, please take one moment of your thoughts to extend your blessings to all our men and women that are still in uniform today in harm's way. Thank you very much. Greetings from the Charleston Historical Society, uh, President John, George Morton is not able to be with us. Uh, but I'm the immediate past president, so I can extend to you all the greetings from the office of the members. So. They say there's a place where dreams have all gone. They never said away. But I think I know 
It's miles through the night, just over the dawn, on the road that will take me home. my bones I've been here before The ground feels the same But the land's been torn I've a long way to go The stars tell me so On the road that will take me home All of us trouble will be gone And I'll know what I've lost And all that I've won When this road finally takes me home When I pass by Don't lead me astray Don't try to stop me don't stand in my way, for I'm bound for the hill where the cool waters flow on the road that will take me home. Love waits for me round the bend, leads me endlessly on. All of our troubles will be gone And I'll know what I've lost And all that I've won When this road finally takes me home soldiers are Cadet Lieutenant Richard Dominguez and Cadet Cameron. We had Ebenezer Field who was killed in First Bull Run in Virginia. William Reed died in First Bull Run in Virginia. We had Patrick Lavin who died in Alexandria, Virginia. We have William Noyes and we also have Alexander M. Barber who died in Balls Bluff, Virginia. In 1862, we have Rufus Grant. In the Pence Peninsula Campaign, we had Edwin N. Lewis, who died in Yorktown. We had Charles L. Lord, who also died in Yorktown. We have William W. Stone, who died in Williamsburg. In the Seven Pines in Fair Oaks, we have James Bicknell, who died in Gaines Mill. We have Edwin D. Clark, who also died in Gaines Mill. We have John McMahon, who died in Fair Oaks. We have Caleb C. Mortimer, who died in Gaines Mill. We have Ansel B. Kellum, who died in White Oak. We have Patrick McCarty, who died in Glendale. In the Seven Days Battle, 
We have John McLaughlin, who died in Malvern Hill. We have John Coffey, who died in Gaines Mill. We have John Lyons, who died in Newport News. We have Joseph Stozer, who died in Malvern Hill. And we have William H. Gow, who lived, who died in Philadelphia. The lower seaboard, we have Moses Tate, who died in New Orleans. John Deering, who died in Baton Rouge. Archibald Hutchinson, who died in New Orleans. John Malone, who died in New Orleans. Dennis McCarran, who died in New Orleans. Owen Timmons, who died in New Orleans. In the Burnside Expedition, we have Thomas Power, who died in Dylan Head. Charles McCarthy, who died in James Island. Francis Joy, who died in New Bern. Timothy Sheehan, who died in New Bern. In the Pope's Campaign, we have John Johnson, who died in the Second Bull Run. John Hill, Second Bull Run. John Ring, who died in New Orleans. We have Elwin Car Carley, who died in New Orleans. We also have John A. Bailey, who also died in New Orleans. From the Gettysburg Campaign, we have Thomas Martin, who died in New Orleans. 